Hello, everyone. I am Ashwini and I am fashion features writer for Femina. Uh, as we all know, navigating the bridal space, you know, which is zeroing down on the perfect outfit, which does not hemorrhage your personal style, but looks fabulous nonetheless, is a very, very tricky minefield. Um, it's tricky for any woman, no matter how fashion savant she is or otherwise. So today I interview Rahul Khanna of Rohit Gandhi and Rahul Khanna, who have been designing modern clothes for, for more than 20 years now. Uh, so, sir, how has the experience been of uh, designing clothes for so long? Hi, everyone. I think it's been a journey and a, what a wonderful journey from uh, we started when there was no Facebook and here we are with full on technology and uh, we are doing a Zoom uh, meeting right now. So, it's, uh, it's uh, the things have changed and uh, we've had a fun ride and lots of things have changed. The... The, our client, the, the groom and the bride have become more conscious. They know what they want. Uh, they are young. They are, they are travelers. Uh, I think they are trendsetters now. So they know what they, are, they want. So I, we, are, we are very excited to make the collection for the mo new modern groom and bride. So speaking of change, uh, you know, like I said, you've been designing clothes for over two decades now. So do you think your, your label also has evolved uh, to suit the modern needs? Uh, and how has it evolved, basically? Uh, yeah, uh, Rohit and me started this label. Uh, we started H2O, which was uh, a breathwear label. At that time in the country, there was nothing called breath. Uh, mm -hmm. All the Indian designers were doing uh, couture and mainly bridal wear. Uh, that's when we started in 1997. So we wanted uh, to bring in clothes which were affordable, ready to wear, but we're still with a designer touch. So uh, we started with a very uh, a breath line uh, with H2O. Then we had our own label called Q. We wanted to set up a brand. And uh, we had very successful years with our breath brand. And, uh, you know, at that time, people used to travel and go out of India to buy Western modern clothes. So we brought them to India. We made them with our Indian twist, with our Indian embroideries, uh, but give them a, a modern global silhouette. So it, we were an uh, instant hit and we had many stores. We went international, uh, we, fashion weeks came back, we were showing in Paris, so we sold all over the world. And uh, it's been after that, we launched Rohit Gandhi Dalkana, a couture label, a high-end high uh, fusion wear. And recently we started our bridal, uh, bridal wear for men and women. Yeah. So uh, it's it's been a very long time for you <coughs> that bridal couture. Do you, would you say that there's been there's any particular reason why you decided to wait so long uh, for a bridal couture collection? I think uh, we waited so long because we were very happy doing our um, ready to wear. But I think um, the ready to wear became so uh, uh, meaningless because everybody was buying things online and we wanted everybody to get an experience so we our clothes have a story we are telling a story we wanted the touch and feel to be still there so we wanted people to come into our stores uh online is really really big but i think we ventured into couture because uh we are known to do our surface ornamentations uh we are known to do our hand techniques so it is a very gradual um thing for us to put them into indian silhouettes to modern silhouettes and at the same time, and I think uh, the Indian market uh, needed something which was global, yet traditional. So we thought we'd bring them together. So that's why our couture line came out. And I thought that was, I think this all came out in the lockdown period when we were sitting home and we wanted our, you know, cargas to be busy. So we thought, let's start giving them work, let them not go uh, jobless. So for, the, for, for two years, we started developing embroideries and we gave them work. And that's how our couture collection came out. That's a fab story, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, how do you think India's bridal, you know, landscape itself has changed uh, for a, from, from the time that you guys have seen it? Yeah, there was only lengas and the Shirwanis, uh, which were people opted for their thing. But now I think uh, people have different functions. They have a cocktail wear, they wear traditional, they have mendi. And I think there are theme days for everything and lots of people are doing destination weddings. Mm -hmm. So I think people require different kind of clothes. They want something to go resort wear, to, um, to a great Gatsby look, 
you know, um, there is always a function with everybody. The girl is wearing a gown and the boy is wearing a tuxedo even. So I think things have changed gradually. And uh, just the regular bangal and the Sherwani has got a major twist. People are doing silhouettes. They are doing modern, uh, modern techniques on garments. The Sherwani is just not the same. Yeah. And I think um, where, where we come in together is because uh, we are known for our cocktail wear and uh, we've started a bridal wear for the cocktail day and we will slowly go to the wedding day but at the moment we are doing cocktail and reception looks for the modern bride and groom. But that's that's amazing. So uh, would you say you have a thought process when you're designing for these uh, millennial grooms and brides? So I think lots of my friends, uh, children are get, getting married, they've all studied abroad, they're coming back to the city and uh, you know they want to they want, they have different themes. There was a carnival theme, right? Yesterday we were dressing up a groom for, uh, there was a Gatsby night. There was something on the yacht. So I think it's very challenging. And I, I we love it when we talk to the groom and the bride and uh, we do these uh, personal chats and they want something different and want to stand out. And they just, they still don't want to wear traditional uh, proper Indian reds and oranges. Um, they are op opting for champagne colors, jewel tones, emerald greens you know like a bright ocean blue so i think these are new colors for the new colors for the wedding day the collection alchemize if you were to walk us through the kind of pieces that we would find in uh, alchemize what what would be uh, the creations uh, i think uh, this whole uh, alchemize collection is the evening wear collection it's a cocktail wear uh, we are in, we have a we have a uh, we have the color stories ranging from the champagne golds to ivories to bright scarlet reds to uh, ocean blues. So there's a different color tones and also we've thrown in a dash of emerald green. So it's all jewel tones. Um, they are gowns, but um, they're cut in a way which are, um, you know, very uh, 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 flattering to the body. So they have shapes, but they still have fit, fit and flare. So they go uh, from a fit to a big flare. So, and then also they are detachable. You can wear it as a dress. You can team it up and as a, as a set, as a lenga. Uh, so you can tone it down and you can uh, bring it up as well. So there are fur capes. There are lots of attachments which come together. It's different from the men also because men also, we, are do we have done jewel, jewel embroideries on tuxedos, which, uh, which is new. So a lot of embroidered stuff for men, a lot of uh, hand techniques for men, a lot of uh, velvets and uh, luxurious silk fabrics. We've woven some new techniques. So I think all the new textiles we developed, we couldn't make clothes uh, during lockdown, but we did a lot of development on hand embroidery. So those, all those things are coming out in our collection this season. Uh, I, I hope there's a lot of fringes because I, I love the way you guys utilize fringe in your clothes. That's, I think it gives so much movement. That's our that's a love and we've done a lot of woven fringes. We've done a lot of hand techniques. We've done a lot of braided blouses. Even for men, we had some fringe scarves. Um, I think the fringes will be always there in our collection. It's a USP and uh, it's a new way to do it. We've done a dupatta with that. So it was all a fringe sari we've done this season. So it's uh, it's oh, amazing. amazing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think the minute I think of your label, I see fringe. I think it's become a sort of a part of your legacy, a part of your design legacy. Uh, yeah, I think uh, the uh, the kind of braiding we, techniques we use. I think we drape it by hand, we weave it. Um, our workers, our factories, they all. Um, we have so much braids happening in our factory that one one day we just open it up and was full of a fringe room you know we have a, <laughs> a fringe room from the last 10 years and uh, tassels and fringes and um, you know the surfaces which we develop are so unique that it can be uh, put on a western silhouette you can team it on a sari you can wear it as a dupatta so it's versatile you know and I think uh, what the what's the best compliment we get is from uh, our friends that you know we bought a sari from you or something or a dress from me and I'm passing it on to my daughter so mm -hmm. now I feel that's the one of the best compliments which we keep getting uh, mm -hmm. because our clothes are um, just not for the ramp yes. it's for people and we believe in clothes which uh, last longer and which can be passed on to generations 
Uh, so the last question I would have is, uh, you know, because you've been, like I said, you've been doing this for a very, very long time. So if you had to give a style advice for brides to be uh, when they're making the, the choice for their outfit, what, what would be the one advice that you would give them? I would uh, advise them to stop following the inter internet and just don't want and don't come up with copies of uh, photographs of somebody what they've worn uh, and show it to the designer and say that you want something like that. I think uh, let's be original and I think everybody should have a style statement and how a bride carries the outfit is really good and when you meet the bride we give suggestions but of course the bride always had a dream to wear something uh, unique and I think uh, it should be unique and it should uh, be it should be comfortable as well. It yeah. should not be that you are uh, not enjoying your own day. So you, uh, choose something that's comfortable, add, add uh, bright colors or add something. But the key thing is to be comfortable and yet uh, be striking at the same time. That's a great advice. <laughs> I think not, like I said, not uh, hemorrhaging your own personal style yeah. uh, is the most important key. So I think the outfit should go to your way with your own style as well because I feel yeah. a lot of brides are just decking up as bright uh, Barbie dolls for their this thing and I think um, it suits some, it doesn't suit some but it sticks if something is in trend, don't follow the trend so literally and I think uh, use your, see your body, body type, what suits you, take the advice of the designers and we are there to help you. All right. So thank you so much for giving us uh, some of your time. I understand you've been very, very caught up. Uh, so thank you so much. Thank you. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Uh, Take care. And in have person this time. Happy festive <laughs> season to all of you. Thank you so much. Okay. All right, sir. Thank you. Bye.